So hey guys, how are you all? Welcome to Dot So we are back with a brand new movie on what if Sage Naruto was greatest many gift from Asia movie, but before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. Just one minute to go. I wish this would hurry up. He thought as he looked down at his watch. The minute hand was one tick away from hitting the 12 mark and he wished it would just move already. Once 3 pm finally came around he could finally leave the entrance of the school without the lusty gazes of single and some married mothers aimed towards him. He felt the gazed every morning and afternoon from Monday to Friday. He tried to ignore it but the women around him were not exactly trying to hide their obvious affections for him. One was even bold enough to pretend to drop her purse in front of him and bent over, showing her shapely rear and thong that was clearly sticking showing from above her pants. He'd be lying if he said he wasn't tempted, but being alive for so many years and meeting some of the most beautiful women in existence, he had developed some form of restraint. Though he did notice that some of the men and husbands of said women were looking a little annoyed and openly glaring at him for taking all of the attention of the women away from them. Naruto Uzumaki didn't let it bother him though since he had grown used to the looks. It wasn't like he was trying to steal the attention. It just happened. Naruto physically looked like he was in his mid-twenties with short blonde hair that was wildly spiky that somehow looked like it was defying gravity. His skin was tanned, very different to the other parents who were all quite pale and milky in appearance. His eyes were rich blue color like small sapphires and caught the attention of those that looked him in the eyes. He was athletically built with his loose white shirt, hiding his well-chiseled physique. He stood quite tall at 6'2 and was taller than most of the other parents. Overall he had a very Californian look that made most believe he was from the United States. He had moved recently to the Japanese town of Kuo half a year ago, deciding it is time for a change of scenery. It was a nice little town and the people has proven to be good people. The last place he had lived in was nice, but unwanted attention had kept creeping up on him that he really didn't need. So he packed up and moved to this friendly little town. The sound of the bell rang throughout the area, breaking him form his thoughts as the front doors to the primary school were flung open and a wave of children began exiting the building. Guo Primary School was very highly recommended school which he had lucked out on when he had moved here. For a small town it was surprising to hear that it had a primary school, high school and a college. The high school though was currently an all-girls school, but that wasn't much of a problem for Naruto since it only helped make his decision to move to Kuo. Naruto stood patiently with his hands in his pockets, his eyes scanning the doors intently. Before long though he finally saw who he was waiting for and couldn't help but let a big happy smile appear on his face. Walking out of the building in her school uniform and with a small backpack over her shoulder was a little girl around the age of eight. Her hair was blonde and reached down to the middle of her back with bangs that split down the middle of her forehead and a single strand that stood up high in the air. Her eyes were a beautiful shade of green that Naruto constantly compared to the color of the trees around the leaf village. She had the cutest little smile on her face as she walked past the older students and looked around the school entrance. When she spotted Naruto she the smile quickly got bigger and gently ran towards him. Naruto bent down on one knee and opened up his arms to her just like he did every other day. Appa. She called out before giggling as Naruto picked her up and began showing her with butterfly kisses across her face. It was very cute to see and made the other women in the area coo and laugh at the affection he was showing. Naruto loved showing his daughter with love and was always willing to give her kisses and cuddles when she wanted them, which was almost always. Picking her up was always a highlight of the day since he got to see her face bright up when she spotted him. It made the father in him burst into joy. Did you have a good day Asia? He asked as he put her down and held onto her hand. Asia Uzumaki waved goodbye to her classmates as they began walking away from the school and making their way home. Since they moved to the area six months ago he didn't see the point in buying a car since they lived only 15 minutes away from the school. Plus everything else like the supermarket and the hospital was all within walking distance. It was good papa. I drew you a picture in arts and crafts. Wanna see? She asked making Naruto nod his head in confirmation. Asia ducked into her back as they walked home and pulled out a piece of A4 paper and handed it to her father. Naruto couldn't help but smile. It was a picture of him and Asia in front of their home with a big cherry blossom tree standing next to the house. They were holding hands and had big smiles on their face with the words me and papa written underneath the picture. It was drawn in various colors of crayon and was what you expected from an eight-year-old. Naruto's hand gently patted Asia on the top of the head affectionately, drawing a big smile from the little girl. It's a very beautiful picture Asia. This is going up on the fridge with the other ones. He told her getting a big look of accomplishment appear on her face. You're becoming quite the little artist. I like drawing and Miss Yuki always likes my pictures and gives me a cookie. Do you like Miss Yuki? She seems like a nice person. He wasn't lying. Miss Yuki was a very sweet lady in her early 30s and was quite pretty. 
Asia took a quick liking to her and vice versa with his daughter, always talking about how nice she was and that C was her favorite teacher. Miss Lane too couldn't speak more highly about Asia and express how wonderful a little girl she was. She had even complimented Naruto for raising such a polite, caring and well-mannered little girl who never caused any problems in the classroom. The teachers at Asia's school couldn't help but fall in love with Asia. She was just a joy to be around. Asia nodded her head enthusiastically. Yeah I really like her. She's really nice. Well that's good. I would hate to hear my sweet little princess is unhappy with her teacher. Naruto muttered as he squeezed her hand. Did you eat all of your lunch? Yes, Papa. I only left the crust. Right. I keep forgetting to take those off. I'll make sure I do that for tomorrow's lunch. Asia giggled as she swayed her arms around. It's okay Papa. I don't mind. I did eat all of my apple though. The girl. Fruit is good for you so eating all of it means you're going to grow up healthy and strong. He told her making her laugh and nod her head. Five a day does keep the doctor away after all. At least that's what I hear. Papa silly. Asia laughed before squealing in joy as Naruto picked her up and began tickling her in the middle of the street, attracting the attention of the people around him. Isn't that sweet? That's so cute. He's such a good daddy. She is just the sweetest. Listen to that cute laugh. I wish my husband was like that with our daughter. Asia meanwhile was stuck in a laughing fit, twisting her body to escape her father embrace as he ticked her tummy and under her arms. Papa stop. It's too twicklish. She called out making Naruto laugh back in response. Now fine. But on one condition. He told her as he stopped the tickling and pointed to his cheek. Asia got the message and blew a big raspberry kiss on his cheek, making him smile big before finally putting her down. The rest of the journey was done in a peaceful silence with Asia skipping the rest of the way home. Before long they arrived at their home which was a decent-sized three-bedroom house in the suburbs of Kuo. It had a nice little garden in the front of the building that Naruto would work on weekday afternoons. Sometimes Asia would help him with the plants or sometimes would play with the next-door neighbor's young son who was a classmate of Asia's. The two had become quick friends and Naruto would have him over most weekends. He didn't mind that her best friend was a boy since they were only eight and his parents were nice people. They were very welcoming when they moved into the neighborhood. Though he did make sure to keep an eye on the young boy as he grew up. If he thought he could make a move on his sweet little girl when puberty came around then he had another thing coming. Asia dinner's ready. Finish what you're doing later. Naruto called out as he placed two plates of chicken, rice and dumplings on the table, small bits of steam coming off the food, indicating it had only just been made. Humming Papa. He heard before he heard light footsteps coming down the stairs. Asia entered the kitchen moments later and walked over to the sink where a small stool was waiting for her. She quickly rinsed her hands, making sure she washed with soap like her father had showed her before she jumped down and took her usual seat around the table. Remember to blow on it sweetie. It's quite hot. Naruto told her before the two took a breath and blew on the food on their forks, cooling it down as they took their first bites. A pleased look appeared on Asia's face as she chewed on the food before swallowing. She made sure to swallow her first before talking. She knew talking with her food in her mouth was very impolite and icky. It's really good papa. I'm glad you like it. We didn't have much in so we have to make a food run at the supermarket tomorrow. Naruto explained which made Asia nod her head happily since she had food in her mouth. Naruto had to smile since she had so much rice in her mouth, it made her cheeks look like a squirrel. He had lots of practice with cooking, so Naruto knew what his girl wanted. Appa. Asia spoke. Can Issei come over to play on Saturday? This Saturday? I don't see why not. Will Arena be coming over too? I haven't seen her this week. I don't think I have seen her father picking her up after school now that you mention it. Irina was another one of his daughter's friends that was in her class and was the one that started Asia becoming interested in God and Christianity. Since meeting Irina he had noticed Asia had stared praying before bed, thanking God for everything good in her life. It caught him by surprise, but Asia seemed to be getting quite interested in it that he saw no reason for it not to continue. Irina was a sweet girl who Naruto was happy was friends with Asia. Asia was quite shy, whereas Irina was opposite and very confident and outspoken. They were a good combination, and he hoped a bit of her rubbed off onto Asia. He had met Irina's father a couple of times, and the man was nice enough and seemed to enjoy Asia's presence when she visited. Altogether Asia, Irina and Issei were a close trio of friends, and it made him happy to see Asia had two good friends beside her. I'm not sure Papa. She hasn't been in school all week. I think she's sick this week. Oh well that's a shame. I hope she get better soon. I can phone her home tomorrow and find out if she is well enough to come over on Saturday if you like. Naruto told her which made Asia nod happily and in excitement. He was glad Asia liked his cooking and never seemed to complain about what he made her. In fact she almost ever complained about anything. 
the only time she would powder give him one of her cute little glares was when he tended to baby her in front of her friends. No matter the age a girl didn't like being babied too much in front of their friends. Asia enjoyed learning unlike most children her age who just wanted to play and have fun. She liked it most when Naruto would teach her how to bake cookies and other baking goods. He had made some for her to take into class and share with her class, and it ended up being a big hit. Asia particularly liked cookie with peanut butter inside them and turned into a little fiend when she was near them. Naruto had to make sure he limited the amount of he baked since he didn't want her eating too many too quickly. If he did make too many he had to hide them since Asia would hunt all around the house for them. She was like a bloodhound when it came to peanut butter cookie. After dinner the two enjoyed a slice of chocolate gateau each for dessert before they retired to the living room. Asia didn't have any homework to complete, so they settled with getting a large piece of A5 paper out of Naruto's office, along with some paint and brushes. Asia was delighted and quickly began painting a large castle in the middle of the paper. Shall I add a moat to the castle sweetie? Yeah and put crocodiles in there too. Why crocodiles? I didn't think crocodiles live in castles. They don't live in it papa. They protect the princess who lives in the castle. Asia explained looking at Naruto with a confused expression. Oh how silly of me. Of course not. He replied before drawing the crocodiles into blue paint which represented the moat. For the rest of the evening the father and daughter duo happily painting and drew various pictures that Naruto had promised he would find a place to hang up. Most likely his office was going to be turned into his daughter picture room at the rate these pictures were being made. But hey if it made Asia happy then he supposed he could live with some added color in there. Evening. Did you brush your teeth properly? You know I can always tell when you haven't. Naruto asked as he pulled the duvet covers of Asia's bed to the side. The little girl nodded her head in confirmation as she walked into her bedroom, rubbing her eyes as the long day began to catch up to her. She let a low yawn just to add to how tired she was which made her father cool at her. She looked very cute in her purple pajamas which had a picture of a red star in the center of it. Her favorite fuzzy white slippers were keeping her feet warm and he knew she would be wearing them to bed. She was very attached to her fuzzy slippers. Apparently the woman who sold them to him said all girls needed a good pair of fuzzy slippers. The room looked like a little girl wall with light yellow walls and plenty of cute and cuddly stuffed animals decorating various places around the room. Some of her paintings were on the walls with a big white wardrobe set up near the window. It was very tidy and orderly, something Naruto was inwardly grateful for. Yes papa I did. I rinsed too. She told him as he gently pulled off the small silver cross necklace that was around her neck. Naruto gently put it on the bedside table, right beside her lamp where she could see it. He lifted her up, amazed at how perfect she could still fit in his arms, and placed her down in her usual spot on the bed. Good girl. Now hop up and let's get you tucked in. You story. She whispered tiredly making him gently rub the top of her head with his thumb. Alright but only one chapter tonight. Naruto told her before he took his usual spot on her bed, tucking her under his arm with Asia placing her head on his chest and snuggling happily into her father. She could barely keep her eyes open as Naruto opened up the drawer next to her bed and pulled out Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Naruto had started reading it to Asia just the day before. In the evening, after he had finished his supper Naruto read as he began reading the chapter. He enjoyed this time with his daughter since Asia had always enjoyed it when he read to her. The sound of him reading always managed to lull her into a peaceful sleep. Hopefully he could keep doing so with the next few years before Asia became a teenager. He was barely halfway through the chapter before he noticed Asia was fast asleep, a tiny smile on her face as she breathed at a quiet and steady pace. Naruto sat up as careful as he could, ensuring he didn't wake her up before he slowly lowered her down to the bed. He placed her head on the pillow as carefully as he could while pulling the covers over his small body. Good night my sweet girl. Have wonderful dreams. He whispered as he smoothed down her hair and placed a fatherly kiss on her forehead before he stood up. He quietly left the room, making sure to leave her nightlight on before closing the door shut. Naruto's head lay against the wood of the door for what felt like forever, before he eventually lifted his head away, showing his eyes were now a lot more focused and far colder and older than he would ever show Asia. He walked slowly across the hallway before he walked down the stairs. Traveling down he saw the front door was wide open, something he had heard open while he was reading to Asia. He didn't say or do anything at the time since he didn't want to frighten Asia. He wanted to wait before he acted. Stepping off the staircase he gently shut the door before he brought up his hand into the Taurus symbol. Fuin. The brief symbol appeared on the door of the house before quickly disappearing. He didn't want what was about to happen to be heard by those outside and living in the surrounding area. Lifting up his hand again he did the same thing again and activated a silence and locking seal of Asia bedroom, ensuring nothing happened to her and she too was spared from the noises. 
walking down the hallway and entering the living room, Naruto wasn't surprised to find five people standing there all covered in black cloaks and covering their face with hoods. On their backs however quickly indicated to Naruto who they were and explained then negative feelings he felt from upstairs. The set of dark wings was proudly displayed on their backs, each easily as large as their bodies, and took up a lot of room. You know when I moved here to Kuo I had hoped I had seen the last of you clowns. I didn't put many seals on my house because I thought my daughter would be safe here. That she can be spared from people like you trying to take advantage of the gift that has been given to her. One she is not even aware of yet. I see I was apparently mistaken and it was only wishful thinking. Naruto said as his cold blue eyes gazed at each individual. He tried to cover up a look of hatred and spite, but it wasn't possible since he knew what they were here for. What? Got nothing to say fallen angels. He asked as he closed the door behind him, blocking the way out for the intruders who just stood there not moving. He knew full well what they were. They were beings who had fallen from the grace of God, the God of Christianity, due to having impure thoughts that divert them from the teachings of the God in the Bible. He had kept tabs on them for years in the off chance something like this had ever happened. He knew of the Grigori and knew quickly they had not sanctioned the surprised raid on this home. The leader of that organization would not have been foolish enough to send five low-level grunts to his home. It meant these fallen angels had either gone rogue or they were working for someone who didn't take orders from the Grigori. We want the girl. Give us to her and we might decide not to kill you. The one at the front said. Simultaneously long spears of light appeared in the hand of every single fallen angel in the room and all were aimed at Naruto. Naruto though looked at them unimpressed and showed no sign of fear or nerves. In fact he just rolled his eyes as one of his hands went into his pockets. You will never get yours hands on my daughter. Then we will take her from you. Another said as his wings spread out even further and Naruto watched as he pushed to the ground. The fallen angel must have had the bright idea to smash through the ceiling and go into Asia room to take her. However instead the fallen one ended up slamming into a pale blue wall shield that appeared all around the room and along the ceiling. What is this? What kind of magic is this? The fallen angel asked as he glared up at Naruto. It's not magic. It's Charka. Naruto explained before all the fallen angels suddenly slammed to the ground front first as a powerful aura suddenly hit them. Naruto's eyes struck fear into the five beings as their light spears broke away while small cracks appeared in the chakra wall around the room. Let me explain something to you. I have met many of your kind in my years alive and most have ended up on the bottom of my shoe. There are very few of you I actually like and even fewer that I would ever allow to come near my daughter. Now you just barge into my home and demand that I hand my sweet, beautiful and innocent daughter over to some scumbags like you. We were just following orders. One gritted out as they all began losing the ability to breath form the pressure. Naruto crouched down and stared into the eyes of every one of the fallen angel. And whose orders would that be? Naruto asked but wasn't too surprised to find none of them were talking or giving up, who told them to make this big mistake? He just shook his head in disappointment. Your biggest mistake was coming here tonight. Naruto added. This wall you see around you. It wasn't made to keep me in here with you. No in fact it was made to keep you in here with me. The pressure suddenly disappeared, finally allowing the fallen angels to get back and face the man in front of them. More light spears appeared in their hands and they all went to strike the father of their objective. Naruto beat them to the punch though as he threw his hand over and slammed into the face of the leader of the group. Almost immediately dark branches burst out of the back of the man's head, completely destroying the head and making the body fall to the ground lifelessly. Blood splattered all over the room and across the carpet which made Naruto sigh. Ah man that will be a pain in the ass to get out. He then looked up to the see the petrified looks of the other fallen angels and saw them trying to slowly back away. Naruto just stared at them unemotionally before he lifted his right arm. Wood style. Cutting technique. As quick as one could blink his right arm suddenly became a large swarm of sharp tough branches that raced through the air as quick as lightning. The other four fallen angels didn't stand a chance as the branches ran right through their bodies, impaling them right through and lifted them into the air. They were swung from side to side, slamming against the walls as screams and yells of pain and terror echoed through the room. The pain was unimaginable as their bodies were destroyed. Above in her room Asia continued to sleep peacefully, completely unaware of the massacre her father is currently performing to her would-be kidnappers. The little smile on her face got a little wider as she enjoyed sweet dreams. Okay I think I have played with you enough. Naruto muttered harshly before loud snaps could be heard coming from the intruders. The branches that impaled them had wrapped around their spines and with one swift movement had snapped them, making their bodies go completely limp and lifeless. The branches began to recede, leaving their bodies and letting them drop to the ground with harsh thuds. The living room was a mess with blood covering every inch of the decorations and sofas. More blood continued to leak into the carpet as the smell began to hit his nose. 
Naruto wasn't bothered since he had grown accustomed to the smell over his many years alive. Aisha wouldn't be too happy. He whispered when he saw some of the blood had gotten on the pictures they had made from earlier. He would have to come up with some kind of explanation later. Stepping over the bodies he took a seat on his couch and ran a hand through his hair. It all happened so quick he almost got a head rush. Naruto had closed his eyes for just a few moments before opening them and finding himself in a completely different room with him sitting in a large circle with various candles around the room. The rest of the room was covered in darkness. Despite this he knew he wasn't alone since he had been in this spot many times before. It's been a while since I've been here. You guys normally keep to yourselves and stay quiet. He spoke as nine large sets of eyes appeared in the darkness as the familiar forms of the nine tailed beasts materialized around him in a circle formation. Hirama, Jayuki, Chimei, Seiken, Kakuo, Son Goku, Asobu, Matatabi, Shukaku. Naruto greeted as the nine biju of the elemental nations nodded back at him in unison. We caught what happened when you used your powers. Asia was spared. Jayuki spoke first as the nine started Naruto in unison. They had been sleeping for some time and Naruto using the Mokuten had woken them up in time to catch the deaths of the fallen angels. The nine chakra monster all had a soft spot for his little girl. She's fine. She's fast asleep in here and with seals protecting it. They were never going to get a glimpse of her. That's good. I don't wish the poor little kitten to face such foes at such a young age. She is so innocent and sweet. I hate the thought of her being hurt. Matatabi added with her siblings muttering in agreement. It's because of that gift of her. The sacred gear residing within her. Karama spoke. They want it bad which indicates it's something of great worth to all sides. Let's not forget about the incident with the stray devils two years ago. Perhaps your other children could help keep these forces at bay. They each have enough political power to label Asia under their protection. Matatabi added but saw Naruto shake his head negatively. No. I asked them to keep their distance until I told them the time was right. I want Asia to have a normal childhood for as long as I can give her and my other children all belong in the true supernatural world. Naruto told them which made them all look down. They were all fond of his other children. Especially Kurama since he himself was Naruto's original tailed beast. Besides they have families of their own now. My girls even have important seats of powers in the respective communities. One day we will all be together, but that time is not now. Not until I decide it's time Asia knew the truth of who I am and the true world that she lives in. What about the boy you live next door to? Issei? He knows nothing as well, but I know what gear he contains considering we met one of the previous wielders. Naruto said as he looked at Kurama who was growling. Stupid overgrown lizard. Was all Kurama said before silence reigned in through the room. Naruto cut the connection and quick as it appeared before he found himself back in his living room, the body still leaking blood into the carpet. He could still hear the voices of the biju in his head but put them to the back of his mind for now. For now he needed to make the living room spotless before his little princess woke up in the morning. Appa do we have everything? Asia asked as she ran into the kitchen wearing an adorable pale green sundress with ballet flats. It made her look utterly adorable, even more so with the pleased smile on her face. Her father was stood in front of the oven wearing a white apron, staring through the tinted glass to check on how the treats he was making were coming along. He wasn't entirely sure how, but the playdate Asia had with Issei and Arena had now changed from a playdate to a sleepover, much to Asia's delight. Issei's parents had told him they had planned a night out for themselves and instead of hiring a babysitter, they asked Naruto if he could have Issei for the night. When he agreed Arena's father had caught wind of it and Arena had begged to go too. Naruto didn't have the heart to decline Arena, so he said yes to her as well. Now he had to keep three eight years old occupied for the day. He was feeling confident. We do sweetie. The last batch of cookies are in the oven. It won't be long now. Naruto assured her as he ran a hand through her hair. You want me to braid your hair while we wait for them to finish. Aisha quickly nodded her head as she took a seat around the dinner table while Naruto stood behind the seat and began braiding her hair in the way he knew she liked. Over the years he had years and years of practice, especially with his other girls. He knew how fussy they could be when it came to their hair, so he learned pretty quickly how to satisfy their taste. Crown of side braid. Side please papa. As Naruto stood there braiding Asia's hair his thoughts went to the other night. It didn't take long for the bodies of the dead fallen angels to be disposed of, though it was a pain in the ass replacing the carpet and getting the blood of the walls. It was made even more difficult when Asia had come down in the morning and began questioning him why there was a new set of paint on the walls and why the carpet had been replaced. Thankfully he had come up with a silly excuse that he knew Asia would buy since to her, he was her silly papa who was a little weird. However he knew he would be making a very important phone call later on, wanting an explanation for what happened. What's that you're humming Asia? Naruto asked as Asia kicked her feet in the air, turning he head upwards to look at her father. It sounded pretty. 
I dunno. I had a nice dream and that song was in my head. Well it's very pretty. Did you have a nice dream? Asia nodded her head. Yeah I did. What was it about? I was with a nice lady and we went all around a big chocolate factory. We ate so much chocolate we almost made ourselves sick. But then we got better and we then ate even more. Asia said as she went into more depth about her dream. To Naruto it sounded like she had taken reading Charlie and the chocolate factory with her to her dreams by what she was saying. Oh and then we went down a slide made of licorice and instead of water is was all syrup. It was fun but really sticky. That does sound like a nice dream. Naruto agreed as he continued crossing parts of ACI hair over one another and making sure he did it the way she liked. Who was the nice lady in the dream? Asia shrugged her shoulders. I dunno. I didn't get her name. But she was very very pretty. She was the prettiest lady I have ever seen. Really? Naruto asked a little interested. What did she look like? Well Asia started. She was very tall, almost the same height as you papa with really long blonde hair. It was all straight but it went all curly at the end. She had really pretty eyes too. They were green like mine and she said mine were pretty too. Naruto hid his surprise and just nodded his head and hummed. Naruto had a feeling the woman was not so much of a dream but someone special that decided to spend some time with Asia. She sounded a lot like a certain someone he knew. Well she sounds very nice Asia. I hope you both had a nice time in your chocolate factory dreamland. Naruto said as he kissed the top of Asia's head, making her giggle and nod back. Naruto looked up at the sky from outside the window and stared up at a few of the white clouds that decorated the sky. Now you're just showing off. He whispered and could have sworn he had a light laugh through the air in response. Heaven. Unknown to most a pair of green eyes the same shade as Asia stared down at Naruto and Asia as the father and daughter duo chatted through a small portal in the air. Beautiful light blonde hair went down her back as she lay on her front and kicking her feet up in the air. Her white dress was tight around her body and showed a lot of cleavage, likely blinding any male that saw her as she was. She listened to Asia tell her story and begin to describe her, getting a sweet smile on her face when she was called pretty. Then she watched as Naruto turned his head and stared straight up at her, as if knowing she was there and was watching them. Now you're just showing off. She heard him say which made her laugh. Only around the two of you fish cake. She said to herself before placing her head in the palm of her hand and just continuing to watch the father-daughter dynamics from afar. She was already beginning to think up other dreams to spend time with Asia in. Uzumaki Residence. Alright I think we are all done. Naruto told Asia as he clapped his hand together. Asia jumped off the chair and ran a hand down the braid going down her right side. She smiled happily and quickly her father around the waist and looked up at him. Thank you papa. I love you. I love you too Asia. Naruto responded back. The sound of a timer went off in the kitchen alerting Naruto over to the oven. Ah the cookies are all done. Chocolate chip. Asia asked with Naruto nodding his head in confirmation. Peanut butter ones too. Naruto got a sly smile on his face leaving her in suspense as he went silent. Asia's eyes and mouth got bigger by the second, fear growing that her father had forgotten her most favorite goodies in the world. If he had forgotten then it would be a disaster. Chocolate chip cookies were good but they just no good in comparison to peanut butter ones. Before Asia could say anything though Naruto began chuckling and pulled out a Tupperware box from one of the drawers containing two dozen cookies. I made them last night. Yay thank you. Papa Asia thanked as she threw her arms in the air in joy, happy that her favorite treats would get served. She planned on eating a whole dozen of them. They were just so good. I know what my little girl wants. Naruto replied back just as the doorbell rang. Asia's face lit up even more in joy as she skipped towards the front door with Naruto trailing behind after he put the freshly baked cookies out on the table and took off the white apron. But the door panic revealed a young boy the same age as Asia with short light brown hair that had a tiny pony flick at the back that stuck out. His eyes like his hair was light brown as well and he wore a red shirt with dark blue shorts and a rucksack on over his shoulder. Like Asia he had a smile on his face when he saw his friend and even had a tiny tinge of red on his cheek when Asia hugged him. I say you're here. Hi Asia. Naruto smiled at the toe kids before looking up at Issei's parents. He could easily see the similarities between them and their son, with both having brown hair and the same skin tone. Hello Hiro. Hello Sarah. Hello Naruto. Thanks for doing this. Sarah said as she kissed her son goodbye and ushered Issei inside with Asia, who quickly taking Issei into the living room. You don't know how grateful we are. Oh that's fine. What are neighbors for? Besides you know Issei is welcome over here anytime. Yes he and Asia have taken a real shine to one another. I'm glad he has a friend like Asia. I can tell she will be a good influence on him, as will Irina I'm sure. The parents laughed. Well I'm glad you both think so highly of Asia. 
I was worried about her starting a new school, but she and Issei along with Irina became friends pretty quickly which I'm thankful for. Balasia is just the sweetest little girl I have ever met. You've done well with her. Sarah added making Naruto scratch the back of his head in embarrassment. A cough from Hiro broke the brief conversation, showing that they were in some kind of hurry. Everything Issei needs is in his backpack with a new set of clothes for tomorrow and a set of pajamas for tonight. He has some snacks in there too that he can share with Asia and Irina. If there is anything we have forgotten you have our front door key and our mobile number. Sarah explained as Hiro nodded to everything his wife just said. Don't worry I got it. Go and enjoy your night. I got everything covered. Naruto told them before waving goodbye as the two left. If the giggle from Sarah and the light butt pat from Hiro was any indication the two were going to have a fun and kinky night. They're going to be late tomorrow. I just know it. Naruto muttered as he rolled his eyes as he watched them drive away for the night away before closing the door. Asia please be careful and don't run up the stairs too quickly. I don't want to have to explain to Issei and Irina's parents why their children have broken limbs. Naruto shouted up to his daughter and her friends and got a squeaky reply back. Okay papa. I won't. We'll be okay Mr. Yuzumaki. I promise. Okay Irina. Keep them in check for me. He replied back before he walked through the house and into his back garden. The garden was moderately sized and was kept very tidy and orderly. At the back was a small white shed where he kept most of his planting tools and lawn mower. Despite the many years of him being alive the one thing that never changed after saying goodbye to Kanoha was enjoying gardening. It was a nice little hobby he kept up over the years and something that became routine to him now. Not to mention it was a great stress relief. It was even better now since he had a decent sized garden to occupy himself with where back in Kanoha he just had a few plots hanging outside of his window. He got out some of his equipment from the shed, rolled up his sleeves and got to work. He could hear the kids playing in Asia's room which was overlooking the garden, so he could tell if they were alright. Kneeling down to a bare plot on the ground he began digging a small hole into the ground to plant some new seeds he got. He was sent them from one of his daughters who was visiting Tokyo last month on business. She had spent some time there and told him he needed to have a sakura tree in his garden. The beauty of cherry blossoms was something of sheer amazement and it brought so much color and warmth to any home. He knew Asia would like it too which was a plus. Not only did his third daughter send him some from her home in Romania. He didn't see her very often but treasured every gift he got. She had sent him some dog rose seeds, the national flower of Romania. They would go great being scattered around the sakura trees once it grew large enough. His children were very busy people so any gift or contact from any of them was great appreciated and loved by him. As he worked away the sakura tree seeds reminded him of his old pink-haired teammate, friend and old crush. He knew quickly that after being alive for a couple of millennium Sakura as well as everyone else he used to know from the elemental nations were likely dead and had been dead for a long time. He wondered if the elemental nations even still existed. He had tried many times to find a way back to his original home, but however he ended up in this world was a one-way trip only and landed him in the middle of nowhere. The only thing he was thankful for was the tailed beasts going along the ride with him. He would have never understood what had happened to him if God and the first angels hadn't found him and helped him adjust to the world. No say you're supposed to bow to the princess. Curtseying is what girls do silly. He heard Irina say along with the giggling of his daughter and embarrassed laugh of the brown-haired boy. Naruto couldn't help but smile and chuckle with them. They were a good group of friends. They were all quite a special group of kids. Two he knew were sacred gear wielders, but he could sense a strong holy aura around Irina. He noticed it the first day he met her which proved heaven and the church and an interest in her. Since her father was religious too it wasn't too surprising. He had briefly seen a holy sword hanging up in their living room when he went to pick Asia up once. He thought maybe Irina being around the sword caused her to have such a strong holy aura around her, but he knew it was more than that. One of the big honchos from heaven had an interest in Irina and they were keeping watch over her. Speaking of holy auras. He thought as he threw his small shovel to the ground and looked up at the sky when he noticed figured slowly descending down form the sky like some god. He wishes he was a god. The being's aura was a mix of positive and negative. Like it was neither god nor dark and was somehow in the middle of the two. Naruto just stood on his knees as he watched the person come down from the sky. The person was male with tan skin and wore a smile with a wicked look to it as if thinking he was some kind of rock star. His air added to that since it was shaggy and was black with blonde bangs. His eyes were various shades of purple, depending on how and when the light hit them. He was fairly tall at 6 foot 1 with a slim athletic build and looked to be in his mid to late 20s, wearing a dark purple jacket and black pants. On his back were 12 black wings just like the intruders. Once his feet touched the ground, he stared over at Naruto with a big grin on his face. Hello my old friend. To what do I owe the summons? He asked as he crossed his arms over his chest. 
He watched as Naruto slowly stood up and began removing his gardening gloves. He didn't say a word as he cracked his neck and hands. Azazel. Naruto said back before making a familiar hand sign and making a shadow clone appear beside him. Keep working on the garden. I don't want the kids wondering where I've disappeared to. And don't make a mess. Got it boss. The clone replied as it got to work like it was told. Azazel watched all this and couldn't stop a small bead of sweat run down the side of his face, which was for a good reason. Now Azazel. Naruto said before Azazel was left surprised and at a loss for words as a gold chain shot out from Naruto's chest and wrapped around him, constricting his arms to his chest and making it immediately difficult to breathe. You and I need to talk. Before Azazel could say a word they vanished in a familiar flash of yellow. Moments later thousands of miles away and in a snow and ice filled landscape Azazel was thrown to the ground, skidding along the ice with his shoulders while Naruto walked with purpose behind him. His eyes like two nights ago were now cold and unforgiven as he stared straight into Azazel's purples one. When I summoned you I expected you to arrive yesterday. You don't just appear when you feel like it. Naruto spoke out, tightening the chain around Azazel who was beginning to look a little purple in the face. Right. Got it. Azazel muttered out before Naruto let the chain loose and made it disappear back into chest. His face didn't lose its cold edge and just crossed his arms as he stood a few meters away from the leader of the fallen angels. He wanted answer and he was going to get them by any means necessary. What's this about Naruto? Azazel coughed out as he slowly began to stand up, a more serious look appearing on his face. He could tell the blonde was in no mood for games right now and he knew better than to act like an idiot when the man in front of him was being deadly serious. Did you order a kidnapping of my daughter? On Asia. Naruto immediately questioned and looked at the face of the man in front of him to see what the reaction would be. He got an immediate answer back as Azazel quickly shook his head. No way. I'm not stupid enough to risk something like that. Azazel told him yet Naruto saw a surprised element to his face. If you knew nothing then explain to me why five fallen angels came to my home Thursday night looking to kidnap my daughter. After all fallen angels are your people and you have the most say in what they can and cannot do. Azazel swallowed and was mentally cursing up a storm. He could now see why Naruto was pissed at him. While he didn't know him to a very personal level he knew that when it came to his children, there was nothing Naruto wouldn't do to protect them. If someone had intended to harm one of them Naruto find out who they were no matter what. I knew nothing about it. I swear I didn't say anything to my brethren or insinuate to go after your daughter. I don't believe him. Crush him. Shukaku bellowed from inside the mindscape while the other tailed beasts tried to keep him quiet, listening in on the conversation. Then explain to me how this happened. Explain to me why five of your brethren decide to pay my home a visit on a suicide mission. Is it something I've done? Is there something I'm missing? Because I'm at a loss right now. Azazel shook his head again. There is no reason why they would come to your home. Few know about you and even fewer know what you can do. And those that know you they know what you're capable of. Naruto didn't let anything cross his face but thought it over and knew that was true in a sense. He had made many friends and many enemies, but very rarely did his enemies try anything against him. As true as that might be I also know how driven and obsessed you are when it comes to sacred gears. Naruto asked as he zeroed in on Azazel. I don't know what Asia contains nor do you. But I bet a part of you would love to find out. See what gear is ticking way inside my daughter. Wouldn't that be reason enough for someone like you? I would never do such a thing. Not to someone as young as your daughter. Azazel justified, but Naruto still didn't look convinced. Fallen angels in general left a bad taste in his mouth when having dealt with them in the past. I'm many things, but I am not someone who harms children or tries to rip them away from their homes ad families. Then if you didn't then perhaps I should have words with the other members of the Grigori. Baracular Shemhazai could provide some light on this, given they are your close confidants and friends. Leave them out of this. Azazel asked with deadly tone underlying his words. I have the utmost trust in them. They would never order an attack on a child. Barakiel especially given he has a daughter himself. Look I don't know anything about this attack, but I can at least try. I have my own network I can use who should be able to provide some light on this. If a fallen angel did order this attack then I will find out. Have you seen any indications of your own deciding to get out from under your thumb lately? Any new enemies? None that I know of. Everything else is the same. The only one who has been making a bit of noise of Kakabiel, but he would never try and branch out like that. He doesn't have the stones to do so. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the leader of the Grigori, a look that made Azazel mentally ready himself for another attack. Instead however Naruto threw a triple-pronged kunai a few feet from where he was standing. Azazel picked it up and looked at it intently. He had seen them before like so many had done but never up close. He couldn't help but admire the craftsmanship. If you find out who you will call me with that kunai. Just throw it on the ground. 
Naruto told him before he started to walk away. As Izzel guessed the conversation was over given he was now being ignored. Before Naruto was about to leave he turned his head and gave Azizel one last frosty glare. If you call me for anything other than this I will physically remove those wings on your back and shove them down your throat. Azizel gave a quiet squeak at the though before Naruto disappeared in a yellow flash, leaving the fallen angel in the middle of the frozen wasteland before he too left by taking off into the sky. Later that night. All right you little horrors into the living room you go. Naruto ushered as Asia, Issei and Arena ran out of the kitchen, each looking giddy and happy. Around their faces they had smears and crumbs of chocolate cake. Each managed to devour it pretty quickly and left Naruto wondering where they put it all in their little bodies. Have you chosen what movie you want to watch? He asked as he walked into the living room to find the three kids cozied up a large blanket fort. He had a stack of recent DVDs he bought for Asia. Asia poked her head out through one of the blanket and pointed towards the one right on the top. That one papa. None of us have seen it yet. She told him making him nod his head. Out to train your dragon. He whispered to himself and heard Karama mutter something about his say and the stupid red salamander as he put it. The three all cozied up. He asked and saw three heads now pop out of the blanket fort, nodding their heads gently. Do you still want popcorn or leave it for later? Popcorn? The three children bellowed aloud quickly answering the question and making him nod his head. Putting the disc into the machine and pressing play, he tiptoed out of the room as the three children got comfortable positions as they began watching the movie. He couldn't help but let a smile grow on his face, as seeing Asia's face look so attentive and joyful, while well, the same looks were on his say and arena. Heading back towards the kitchen he stopped midway the when he heard the phone being ringing. Walking over and picking up the phone, Naruto brought the phone up to his head. Hello Yuzumaki residence. Hi dad. Almost immediately the smile on his face became infinitely bigger at the feminine voice on the other end of the phone. He felt his body go at ease before he leaned his back against the wall. Hello my little yellow princess. He responded back and could hear her laugh on the other end. You still call me that? I'm not a little girl anymore dad. She said making Naruto chuckle. I know honey, but I can't help it. To me you're always going to be one of my little princesses. Even if you are all big and strong now. He said as he remembered her when she the same age as Asia. She was such a little cutie at that age. They all were. How are you? It's been too long since we spoke. How's my sweet little granddaughter doing? She's doing wonderful. She started walking a week ago. I got it on video so I'll send it to you soon. I think I'm getting close to hearing her say mama as well. Naruto grinned. That's great. Tell her grandpa sends his love. I've got a big teddy bear with her name on it just for her. It was true. He had a six foot chocolate furred teddy bear in the loft that he had gotten for him the fair a month ago. Asia had wanted to go and it seemed too good not to win. I know she will love that. She has fondness for everything cuddly. She is a real cuddle bug. Just like her mom. Tell her we say hello. Matatabi told him with murmured agreement from the other biju, making him roll his eyes. The nine send their love. He told her making her laugh again. It was more of a giddy tone than before. Hi guys. I miss you. We miss you too. They shouted giving Naruto a headache at how loud they were. He mentally told them keep it down before turning his attention back to his daughter. So to what do I owe this phone call? Is everything okay? He asked. It was a bit out of the blue, but he happily welcomed any call from one of his children. I'm hearing rumors about an incident from Kuo. That five fallen angels were apparently killed there. What happened? How does she know about that? He thought but then again with Azazel now out looking for who was responsible, it was likely that some of his contacts knew his children. He guessed she would need to be filled in. Dad what are you not telling me? She asked, a serious note in her voice. Naruto sighed and ran a hand through his hair. The kids were too focused on the movie to hear him. Giving him some time to talk about it. Some fallen angels came to the house and tried to take Asia. He told her. He knew immediately what the look on her face was going to be as he heard the end of the phone go silent but could hear her breaths getting more heavy and angry. Likely the temperature had spiked too. Who dared to try and hurt her? Tell me you were the one who killed them. She hissed back. Oh I did. Asia was fast asleep in her bedroom and was spared from it. She knew nothing had happened thankfully. Who ordered it? Was it Azazel? He says he wasn't and I think I believe him. He's not foolish enough to do such a thing. I have him gathering information on who it was. Hopefully he has something concrete soon. Do you need our help? Naruto let a small smile grace his face. No sweetie I got it. Besides you and your sisters have your own responsibilities now and families of your own. I can take care of your sister. I know dad, but she's still our sister. I still think you should come and live with me in Kyoto. So we can be together and things like this won't happen. The others all agree you should at least stay with one of us. 
Naruto knew they were trying to be supportive and sweet, but he could handle it. Isaka honey you know the answer to that. Not until she's older and she's ready. She not like you and your sisters. She's human and should have a human childhood. But. Sweet girl I know you mean well but trust me on this. You know what I can do and you know what I am capable of. If you think for a second I will allow Asia to be taken from us, then you don't know me as well as I thought you did. He told her before taking a long breath. I love you my children so much it pains me to ever think of any of you being in trouble or in danger. If anyone harms any of you then heaven and the underworld will not be able to escape my wrath. Please trust me on this. It was silent again on the other end before he heard her sigh in acceptance. Unlike his eldest child Yusaka was not as stubborn and didn't push things. Okay but please at least consider it for the future. She asked. She had wanted him to come and live with he for so long. She just hoped he would one day take up the offer. Just try and stop me. He responded back before he sat down on the hallway carpet. Now tell me everything that's been going on with you since our last talk. I want to know what's been happening on your end. And so for the next half hour Naruto sat talking with his third daughter Yusaka as she filled him in on what she and his granddaughter Kunu had been doing. The kids in the living room must have been very into the movie since they forgot all about the popcorn and never noticed Naruto's absence. Now don't mess with the bandages otherwise you'll have to come back here all over again. And we don't want that do we? Naruto said as sat on a swivel chair in front of a young boy sitting on a doctor's bed. The boy's arm was bandaged up and held in a comfortable sling, with his injured arm tucked close against his chest. The boy was only nine years old and had a shy smile on his face as Naruto gave him a pat on the head. Behind the boy was his mother who had a look of relief of her face. Her hands were placed gently on her son's shoulders while kissing the top of his head. Thank you Dr. Yuzumaki. She said look down towards her son and pointed towards Naruto. What do you say to the nice doctor? The boy rubbed his ankles together and looked away from Naruto, his shyness peeking again. T thank you for making Emmy feel better sir. His stuttering was cute and Naruto just gave him a small smile. The mother smiled at her son and smoothed down the back of his hair comfortably. You're welcome buddy. But I need you to do me a favor though. Naruto asked. The boy looked nervous but nodded his head. Try and stay away from climbing trees for the foreseeable future. At least until you're a little bigger and stronger. The mother nodded in agreement with him and gave her son a look that only mother could give her children. Okay, I promise. Good man. Here take your pick which flavor you like. Personally my daughter likes the cherry flavored ones, but I'm more of an orange flavor type myself. Naruto explained as he pulled out a tub of lollipops in one of the many cupboards around the room. The little boy looked into the tub and took a few seconds before choosing a purple flavored lollipop and quickly popped it into his mouth, making happy sounds that he got a sweet treat. Blackcurrant huh? Good choice. Naruto stood up as the boy hopped off the bed, focusing mainly on his lollipop as his mother gently took his good hand into her own. For a few moments the two adults talked about a payment plan since the woman was a single mother and he could see she was looking a little stressed out as it was. His heart had only gotten larger as the years went by and hated the idea of forcing someone into a corner when they were trying so hard to keep her life along with her son's life afloat. So much to her relief Naruto told them they would set up a payment plan and she could give him a little bit each week until the payment was made. He could see the weight disappear from her shoulders as she thanked him and he watched as they left the room, heading back home for some much needed rest and comfort. He gave her a quick demonstration on how to change the bandages as well as a special sleeve for her son to wear where he was bathed. Naruto, no matter how many times he helped people in the past, always got a warm feeling in his stomach when he helped people. He never expected anything back their thanks was more than enough. Hana is there anyone else? He asked as he stuck his head out of the door and looked towards his assistant, a young brown haired girl in her early twenties, who had joined his clinic a few months ago to help gain experience to one day become a doctor. No Dr. Yuzumaki. That was your last appointment for the day. She told him making Naruto nod his head. In that case you can head home then if you want Hana. I can finish up here. It won't take too long. Naruto told her and got a head nod and a thank you in response. A couple of minutes later Hana got her coat and left the little clinic, waving goodbye to her senior before closing the door behind her. The clinic was silent before Naruto went about to begin the cleanup. The clinic had been set up a few months before moving to Kuo, having some clones take care of most of the foundation work while he stayed and looked after Asia. It was not overly big but was more like a converted three-bedroom house ten minutes away from the schools. It was a nice house with cream-colored walls and various landscape and scenery paintings and pictures across the hallways and waiting room. It gave off a very warm and comforting feeling to his patients, which was what he had aimed to do. He had never been a big fan of hospitals which he always found to have this cold aura about them that made people off-putting. He always felt a hospital should be a place of warmth and comfort where you could feel at ease. 
he felt hospitals lacked that so he decided shortly before Asia was born to set up a clinic. Not only that, but he found some doctors to be rather cold and uncaring, which for him was the wrong attitude to have as a person to who worked with healing the injured and sick. Living such a long life he finally took it in his stride to learn new things to better himself, and healing was one of those things. While he knew he could never live up to the likes of Tsunade, Sakura and Shizune in terms of skill, he made himself knowledgeable enough that he could look after people and help them in ways doctors could. So when he decided to go that route he made sure he was the warmest and friendliest person to work with. Not like Sakura who slapped people through walls when she took offense to something. While he didn't go to college or gain a PhD like humans normally went about becoming a doctor, he used his vast connections to help him in that aspect and eventually aided him in setting up his clinic. Plus he had one thing none of the human doctors had, and that was chakra. He was able to recreate Tsunade's healing palm technique, which took him an annoyingly long time. You'd think he would be able to learn it quickly, given he was able to do things like give people their eyes back. But it required such precise control and concentration that it took him a little while longer to learn to a decent degree. He had to tip his hat to Tsunade, Shizune and Sakura. When you have those kinds of friends in high places it paid to use them every now and again. He set up his first clinic in London, England where he was living at the time, and now some years later he had four clinics altogether. One in the United Kingdom, one in Italy, one in Kyoto and one in Kuo. He visited each from time to time since those that ran the other clinic for him were part of the supernatural world, allowing him to simply horation to the location. It was nice because it meant he could make his own hours, he could spend plenty of time with his daughter, and it allowed him to be part of human society once again, since he had left that community a long time ago and rarely associated himself with humanity until Asia was born. When Asia was born they lived in Italy for the first eight years of her life, before picking up and moving to Japan, where they have been ever since. He took of his white doctor's jacket and hung it up in the cupboard in his office. The office was warm and friendly which when he was working with children, always helped to ease their discomfort. No child liked going to the doctors. Even some of the adults felt more at ease knowing he was more easy going than others and it helped that his clinic easily accessible to get to being near the schools. I still don't understand why you do this. It's a waste of time. Karama muttered sounding like he was half asleep which was no different than usual. I don't really see how helping people is a waste time. Naruto responded back. Oh just ignore him. He's always been a miserable bag of hot gas. Jayuki mentioned making his siblings chuckle and getting a deep growl come from Karama. You want to say that again squid for brains. He asked back though the other biju just continued to laugh at him. Asses. He looked up at the clock and saw it was 4.15. He had a parent-teacher meeting at Asia's school that many of the other parents were heading to as well. He had wanted to get involved in Asia schooling as much as possible, so he became part of the school's PTA. After not too long and after getting along so well with the other parents and friends of Asia's friends' parents, he became a prominent member amongst the parents and teachers. Apparently there was some kind of announcement for the Kuo school board, so many of the parents were going to the meeting to see what the fuss was all about. Probably some teacher fell over and broke a hip. Karama snorted, but this time Naruto just ignored the boring old fox as he switched all the lights off in the building, all ready to head out. Once he got his jacket and briefcase he teleported away via Horatian. The school. Naruto sat down on one of the chairs stationed at the front of podium, greeting various other parents and teachers as they entered the school gymnasium. Asia was spending the evening with Issei and his parents, though made sure he had a clone keeping watch just in case. Despite Azazel checking his connection to figure out who sent the attack, no clear evidence or information came up much to Naruto's annoyance. All they knew was some form within the Grigori's inner circle had done it, but who that was remained unclear. Whoever they were had covered their tracks well, but Naruto would keep a closer eye on them for the future. No way was he letting someone get the drop on him like that again. Once everyone had arrived Naruto watched as the principal of the high school take the stage. The elementary school, high school and college were all linked together and pooled their resources together to help better educated their youngest students to their older students. Most once finishing one would go on to learn at the next level of schooling, and it made Kuo's school system very popular in Japan. Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for all being with us today on such short notice. The man replied to them as he took the podium. He watched as the last few parents took their seats before he started speaking again. I have called this meeting today to make two big announcements. First I would like to announce we are welcoming a new member to the school board. He announced as everyone shot their eyebrows up in surprise, now understanding how serious the meeting was. As of two days ago he has joined as the newest administrator for the Kuo High School. The door to the opposite side of the room opened and caused Naruto's eyes to narrow and his fists to clench together tightly. Walking towards the stage was a man no one recognized and couldn't recall seeing him around the town. 
He looked to be in his early thirties with long scarlet red hair that gave him a very exotic look to him. He was fairly tall, taller than most of the Japanese males and had pale blue eyes that were a much lighter shades than Naruto's sapphires. He wore an emasculate and expensive white tailored suit that must have cost more than what most people make in a year. He had a small red goatee on his chin and had a calm aura about him as he walked into the room. He looked pleased to be there and gave a small wave to everyone in the room. Some of the women blushed at seeing the red-haired man quickly, making some of the men frown at the attention he was getting. Naruto meanwhile was now clenching so hard it was amazing that blood hadn't begun to cover his hands. What is one of those creatures doing here? Kurama growled as did many of the other biju. Don't they normally stay in the underworld? Normally but they make contract with humans now apparently and some apparently even take up residence in some places in the world. I hear one used to be in control of this region before we moved here some time ago. Naruto told them. There was no way he wouldn't research the town he was moving to with Asia. Then I suppose him appearing here means someone else is now in control. Seiken responded making everyone including Naruto deep in their growls. Where do the likes of him get off thinking they can control pieces of the human world? They have no place on earth. Kurama added. Most don't care. Devils in general are split in their feelings towards humans. Naruto told them while keeping his eyes on the man. The higher up the food chain you go in the underworld, the more selfish and human-hating they got. He wasn't sure what to think of devils most of the time. Few knew of him and those that did were mostly dead, long gone after the war between the three factions. Sure there were a few that had tried their luck with him, but none lasted too long before he sent them straight back to the underworld. He didn't like how some of the noble devils of the underworld believed they could own territories in the human world. He didn't see what right they had to do such a thing. He doesn't feel overly powerful. Maybe at best an ultimate class. Let's wait and see how he reacts to this meeting. Naruto told them making them go silent as the red-haired man was about to speak. Thank you principal. It's nice to meet you all. My name is Joseph Gremory and I look forward to getting to know you all very well in the future. I hope we can all get along. He introduced himself much like a student to a new class. Everyone welcomed him and gave him a light clap as he began talking about what he hopes to accomplish for the schools and the students that reside in it. Gremory. Naruto thought. Looking closely at him he could see the similarities that he had heard about for the members of House Gremory, which was one of the pillar houses of the underworld. So this guy is one of the leaders the great devil houses. Lord Gremory I assume. He doesn't look too impressive. Jayuki answered back before listening back in. Do you have children too? A voice asked and everyone saw him nod his head in confirmation. I do. I have a son, but he has already left school and is in college. However my daughter will join Kuo High School in a few years. My wife and I want her to go to Kuo High once her homeschooling is over. We don't want her to lose the social aspect that a young adult gains from going to school. I know of a few others who will joining the school as well. Or devils. Naruto thought while he kept listening in. After a few more minutes the principal took over again as their newest memory took a seat on one of the spare chairs with the other teachers and parents. The second announcement I would like to make was actually made by our Mr. Gremory here. At first I was conflicted since it would mean a big change will happen, but I can now see that the positives will outweigh the negatives. Therefore I would like to announce to you all that it has been decided by the Board of Governors that Kuo High School will no longer be girls only and will become a co-ed school. Surprise could evidently be seen on the faces of everyone in the room, including Naruto. The school had been built almost six decades earlier and had gained great popularity since the women that went there had all done very well and gone on to do great things in their respective professions. It was a very elite school. Though he was a little peeved off since now it meant he had to worry about boys bothering his daughter at high school now. Since boys will now be allowed access to the school, it will mean an influx of new teachers and staff will be required, as well as new facilities, such as boys' lavatories and changing rooms. What about uniforms? One parents asked. The new uniform for the male population of the school will be designed very soon and will likely be in the same color scheme of the girls' uniforms, since they are the school colors. Well as long as they're not wearing skirts. One of the fathers spoke getting some chuckles from everyone in the room. The rest of the meeting went quick with Naruto partially listening to what was going on around the room. The meeting only lasted 30 minutes, with the principal telling all the parents and teachers that another meeting would be taking place in two weeks, time to discuss further on the co-ed idea. Likely they would want to put out awareness to the one about it and Naruto was sure he would be asked to take part in it since he was so well liked with the other parents and the town in general. Once it ended Naruto was about to leave but was stopped when he saw Asia's teacher speaking with Lord Gremory. She waved him over and Naruto walked over, despite not wanting to speak with the latest devil in town. Mr. Gremory please allow me to introduce you to Naruto Uzumaki. The father of one of my students at the elementary school. 
she said making Lord Grimory smile and nod at Naruto. It's nice to meet you Mr. Yuzumaki. And to you Mr. Grimory. Naruto responded back as the two shook hands. When they shook hands Naruto put a bit of effort into the grasp and noticed the other man's body go stiff for just a second before going back to normal. You said you had a daughter correct? How old is she? She's 11. Really? Naruto said back. My Asia is 10. Since there is only a year between them I hope they can both be friends one day. I hope so too. A girl can never have too many friends. He added back with a chuckle before the teacher introduced him to another one of her students' parents. Seeing his attention had gone elsewhere, Naruto took the moment to leave the room, not before noticing the devil's eye glance at him. As if no one else was around the room Naruto's eyes took a frosty turn and glared at the man, giving him a silent warning. What felt like a long time was really just a few seconds before they broke eye contact and Naruto left the room. You're not really going to let Asia anywhere near him or his daughter are you? Matatabi asked before all of the biju heard him snort. Never. Home. Walking inside his home, Naruto watched listen to Asia as she went about her day to him. Shortly after the sleepover with Issei and Irina, Asia had gone into a bit of a somber mood when she found out that her best female friend Irina was moving away to Italy along with her father. From what Irina's father had told him when they had last seen each other, he had managed to get Irina into a great school that was connected to the Vatican of all things. It looked like heaven really did have plans for Irina and was acting on it early. After a very tearful goodbye from the two girls including Issei, Asia had been very sad and depressed for a little while. Naruto had tried to cheer her up the best he could, but saying goodbye to one of her first friends was tough on Asia, and he knew it would take time. He had held her and soothed her many nights in a row until slowly Asia began to return back to normal and began getting out of the funk she was in. He told her he knew without a doubt she would see Arena again one day, and when they did they would have plenty of stories to tell one another. He didn't like not see his little ball of sunshine so unhappy. He would do anything to keep a smile on her face. Plus her friendship with Issei had grown stronger in the last two years. Speaking of Issei the young brown haired boy had serious began to grate on his nerves and it wasn't because his friendship with Asia was getting stronger. He wasn't sure how exactly it happened but Issei had suddenly began to express his love for women's breasts and had begun chanting out Apai whenever a beautiful woman appeared in front of him. He had seen it firsthand when his mother had told him how his teacher had called her in because he made a comment about her own breasts and had drawn them on a piece of paper during art class. From what Sarah had told him they had been spending the afternoon in one of the nearby park and Issei had come across an old lecherous man who was telling children about the wonders of breasts. Telling them they were the greatest of God's creations. As much as he loved women's breasts, they were not God's greatest creations. That Naruto knew for sure. Unlike the other children who had luckily managed to ignore his words, the only person who took his words to heart was Issei, and it awoke Issei's perverted nature. Naruto wasn't happy about it, and he would have preferred to keep Issei as far away from Asia as he could, but he knew how much their friendship meant to Asia. He didn't want to hurt Asia by taking away her best friend, so he left it be for the time being. Do you have any homework Asia? Naruto asked as he hung up his coat and put it away while helping Asia with hers. She looked the same as she did only now was a little taller and her hair had grown out a little more. She was still very much her father's little girl. No papa. I finished it at Issei's. She replied giving him her usual sweet smile that made him smile back. Alright. Then go get changed and I'll start dinner. Naruto told her making Asia nod back. As Naruto stuck his hands in his pocket and was about to deposit his keys away, he couldn't help but notice that Asia's back was beginning to move and shuffle about. He could sense a small life coming from the bag that he hadn't noticed till now, given how small it was. Asia why is your backpack moving? Naruto asked as he placed his keys into the small bowl beside the front door. He watched and saw Asia stop in her step and slowly turn around to face her father, a sweet and cute look on her face, as if she was trying to get away with murder. There's nothing in there papa. It's just me moving my backpack see. She told him as she jostled her back around. Naruto would have fallen for it, but the moment she began moving the backpack around, a small furry head popped its head out of the top of the bag, making Naruto cross his arms and give his daughter a curious look. The head was easily the tiny head of a puppy with brown fur and dark eyes. Her face morphed into a guilty and nervous one. Asia can you please explain this please? Okay papa. Asia whispered as her eyes glazed over and up towards Naruto. Issei and I found this little puppy at the back of his house. Its paw was all hurt so we brought it inside, but we had to hide it since Mr. and Mrs. Hayadu don't allow pets in their house. Naruto sighed as Asia gave him a helpful look. Can you please help him papa? Please see. She pleaded give him a similar puppy dog look that said puppy was currently wearing on its face. You know you can't fight it. Matatabi amused as Naruto mentally nodded to the comment. It was true and he knew it. 
Asia had him wrapped around her finger. All right. Take the puppy into the living room. I'll go get my kid. He told her sighing making Asia squeal in happiness before she into the living room with the puppy still secured in her bag. You big softy. He heard Karama say. Oh and you weren't a big marshmallow when Yusaka was a little girl. He responded which quickly shut the old fox up. Heading up to his office and grabbed one of his medic kits before he quickly headed back toward the living room where Asia and the puppy were waiting for him. He could have solved it easily enough by using the mystical palm technique, but using it would raise too many question out of Asia. She was getting older and therefore was getting more noticeable of things around her. Alright Asia let me take a look at him. Naruto called out as he reached the downstairs. He was about to walk through the living room door when he heard Asia call out for him. Papa look what I'm doing. Turning into the living room, Naruto found himself stopping and staring at his daughter, his eyes now slightly wider than before and his medic kit falling to the ground. Asia had placed a puppy on one of the cushion that decorated the sofas and had her right palm sitting gently on top of the puppy's winded leg. However around Asia's hand was a light green glow that was gently traveling up the puppy's leg. The light peeled every few seconds that Naruto could sense now due to being so close. He could feel it being similar to medical jutsu. He had seen it before. Hell he knew exactly what it was the second his eyes landed on it. Naruto. He heard all of the Bijuu say to him at once as they too watched what Asia was doing. I know. Her sacred gear woke up. I I thought we had more time, but I guess that was just an idle dream. She's one of your children. Son Goku muttered as his eye looked at Asia sadly. She was never destined for a normal life. I guess not. Naruto thought before he slowly walked towards Asia and sat down on his knees beside her. He could see a big smile on her face as she healed the puppy and they could both see it was getting better and was beginning to lick her other hand making her laugh. The glow got stronger the happier Asia got which only made the knowledge of which gear she possessed ever stronger in his mind. It was a perfect fit for Asia when one thought about it. His hand came up and smoothed her hair down while gently kissing the side of her head. Sweet girl. You are a girl of many talents that's for sure. He whispered gently. Papa how am I doing this? Is it magic like in the books and movies? She asked with a confused little look on her face. Naruto could only shake his head negatively at her. No Asia. It's similar in a way, but it's not magic. He sighed sadly, which made Asia frown. What's wrong papa? Why do you look sad? She asked just as the green aura coming off from her hand slowly dissipated until it stopped completely. Her hands were taken by Naruto who comfortably put them in his own. Her green eyes looked back towards her father's blue ones. I'm just a little sad. He told her. I've had a lot that I've needed to hide from you Asia, but now that your power has woken up it's time for me to begin revealing the truth to you. I had hoped that it wouldn't happen for a few more years, but I guess it's not or never. Asia's face didn't change, but her voice a trembling when she spoke. Papa what's going on? She might have only been 10 years old, but she knew something was wrong and that Naruto was very reluctant to ever be speaking with her about this. But Naruto and the Bijuu knew it was time. Gently he picked her up, sat on the couch and placed her on his lap while his hands continued to smooth down her hair before he began telling her all about the real world that she lived in and just who her father really was and the family she didn't even know about. The end. Thanks for watching, also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.